Hello student, myself Melissa Akhla and uh, today we start with our uh, subject structure analysis part 1 and uh, in this subject we start our new topic that is thin cylinder. Okay, before starting thin cylinder, first of all we discuss what is thin cylinder, what is thick cylinder according to thickness and di uh, diameter and then we discuss about why we use thin cylinder and spherical vessel. Okay, first of all what is thin cylinder if in data uh, if in uh, data ask that uh, define thin cylinder define spherical vessel define thick cylinder in that condition definition of this thin cylinder is simply depend upon thickness and diameter relation okay first of all what is thin cylinder if our thickness t less than d by 10 to d by 15 then it is known as thin cylinder and T is equal to our thickness and D is equal to our internal diameter. Okay. Now next, if thick cylinder, what is thick cylinder? If our thickness T greater than D by 10 to D by 15, then this cylinder is known as thick cylinder. Simply here we can see that thickness of cylinder thin and thick both are depend upon relation of thickness and internal diameter okay here we consider only and only internal diameter because if thin cylinder is filled with water filled with fluid the water and the fluid will act pressure in internal diameter okay so here we consider also internal diameter next on introduction why we use thin cylinder and spherical vessel what is the purpose of this thin cylinder and spherical vessel ultimate the purpose of thin cylinder and spherical vessel is storage and transportation okay for storage and transportation we use thin cylinder and spherical vessel and for that we use a different type of vessel just like tank boiler and pipelines and use of these vessels we store and also we transport the fluid or, or any other chemical from one place to another place okay next if our vessel is empty it is subjected to atmospheric pressure okay and this atmospheric atmospheric pressure is act outer surface and also internal surface ultimate this will be zero okay and if our vessel is subjected to internal pressure but when it is full with water it is full with fluid in that condition we have to get values of stresses okay and this stresses ultimately tensile stresses okay if our thin cylinder is subjected to fluid fill up with fluid or oil whatever then this uh, uh, things are produced stresses and this stresses is tensile stresses okay now here i take a four figure in first figure this thin cylinder is used for transportation in second figure here is the use of this thin cylinder for storage purpose again this is turbine and and this figure is also this two figure are is also used for thin cylinder as a storage purpose ultimate here we can say that Thin cylinder and spherical vessel are used for storage and second for transportation from one place to another place. Now we learn, we discuss three stresses that induce in thin cylinder. First stress is our hoop stress or we can say that circumferential stress. Second stress is our longitudinal stress and third stress is our radial pressure. Okay. Now first of all, what is hoop stress? Here I take a one object. If this object is just like a thin cylinder. Okay. When stress is act on circumference of thin cylinder, it is known as hoop stress or circumferential stresses. And if our stress is act along the length of thin cylinder, then it is known as our longitudinal stress. Okay. And this radial pressure is a compressive in nature and magnitude is equal to fluid that is act inside on thin cylinder okay hoop stress and longitudinal stress both are tensile in nature but this radial pressure is compressive in nature okay these three 
stresses induced in thin cylinder but we discuss only this hoop stress and longitudinal stress okay now next here i take a one figure of thin cylinder to explain what is the direction of stresses that induce in first we can say that this longitudinal axis that means longitudinal stress is act along the this length of thin cylinder or we can say that longitudinal axis of thin cylinder and this is our hoop stress or circumference in stresses it is act along the circumference of thin cylinder okay this is our two stresses first one is act along the length and second hoop stress is act circumference of thin cylinder okay now stresses in thin cylindrical cell here two stresses act first is our hoop stress and second is our longitudinal stress now one by one we derive the stresses equation okay first find circumferential stress or hoop stress in thin cylinder okay for this here i take a one figure and this figure is the section of thin cylinder simple the cylinder is given i cut this cylinder from x axis okay if i am cut this cylinder from x axis here first we see the thickness of thin cylinder and stresses hoop stresses induce from circumference of thin cylinder okay and this is our internal pressure p thickness of internal uh, thick, uh, thickness of our thin cylinder and this is the length of thin cylinder simply this is our figure now we derive our equation of hoop stress for thin cylinder next this is the plan of thin cylinder this is our internal pressure p and internal diameter d and t is equal to our thickness of thin cylinder same thickness in this figure is our section of thin cylinder now one by one we find out stress and stress is equal to load divided by area for that we first to find out internal force and then we find out a resisting area to resist this internal pressure p first of all p as we know this is our internal pressure d is equal to our internal diameter t is equal to thickness of cell now we find out total force that means total force act inside this thin cylinder is equal to pressure into area because pressure is equal to force divided by area so this force is equal to pressure into area p is given here now what is area for hoop stress area is equal to look at this this is our uh, l okay and this is our diameter and this hoop force is this total force is act along this uh, length and also this diameter so here take area d into l okay now when after this internal pressure is induced in thin cylinder resisting area now find out resisting area is equal to this thickness 2 times 1 and 2 2 times thickness and uh, this thickness is a uh, I'll take along the length L. So, resisting area A is equal to 2 TL. Now, next, circumferential stress or hoop stress is equal to load divided by area. Here, we find out internal force and this internal force is equal to PDL. Okay. And area is equal to this area is our resisting area and this is our 2 TL. Okay. After dividing this numerator and denominator, our answer is sigma c is equal to pd by 2t. Okay, and this is known as circumferential stress or hoop stress. Clear? Okay, now find out longitudinal stress. And to find out this longitudinal stress, this is our plan and this is our elevation point of view. Look at this. Internal pressure p is act along the length of thin cylinder and Again, here sigma L, that means our longitudinal stress is also induced along the length of thin cylinder. Okay, now in, in this figure, find longitudinal stress, that means sigma L. For that, look at this. This is the thickness of thin cylinder. P is equal to internal pressure and sigma L is equal to longitudinal stress that is act along the length of thin cylinder. Again, here we find out value of sigma L. And for that sigma, that means our stress, 
stress is equal to load divided by area and load is equal to internal force that is act inside the thin cylinder first of all we will find out longitudinal bursting force that is our total force and this total force is equal to our internal pressure p and look at this this is the area of our circle that means pi by 4 d square p into pi by 4 d square now second we find out resisting area because if pressure is induced then given thin cylinder resists this pressure and this resisting area is equal to circumference of circle that is pi d but look at this here we also take a thickness of thin cylinder okay that means our resisting area a is equal to pi dt now we find out longitudinal stress, longitudinal stress that means sigma L, sigma L is equal to load divided by area, total force divided by area and this total force we find out P into pi by 4 d square divided by this pi dt. After dividing this numerator and denominator, here we get longitudinal stress sigma L is equal to P d by 40. Okay, we derive two derivation of stresses first is for hoop stress or longitudinal stress and second derivation is for our longitudinal stress okay now next change in dimension of thin cylindrical cell due to internal pressure here we find out change in dimension okay change in dimension with means uh, if thin cylinder is given in thin cylinder two dimension is measured first is diameter and second is length okay if some vessels are given then third dimension change is equal to our volume okay first diameter that means change in diameter first dimension change second dimension change is equal to our delta l that means along the line and third dimension change is equal to del v okay now guys if some dimension change in given vessel given figure that means in given figure strain is induced because strain is equal to ratio of change in dimension to original dimension okay before finding change in dimension we find out strain for particular dimension okay so that here again uh, we know about this uh, uh, p is equal to internal pressure d is equal to internal diameter t is equal to thickness and l is equal to length of cell okay first we uh, find sigma c is equal to pd by 2t that means our hoop stress second we find out sigma l that is pd by 40 okay now del d that we discuss del d is equal to change in diameter of cell and del l is equal to change in length of cell that means our thin cylinder okay now next circumferential strain or we can say that hoop strain notation of this circumferential strain is equal to epsilon 1 okay circumferential strain is at circumference of thin cylinder okay that means if strain is induced due to this uh, circumferential uh, of the surface dimension change that is diameter okay that means hoop strain is equal to del d by d now we write this equation in the form of stresses. First, we write sigma c by e minus sigma l by m e. This 1 by m is equal to our Poisson's ratio. And here we can write also mu. Now, what is the equation of sigma c is equal to pd by 2t. And what is the equation of sigma l? pd by 40. Now, common this pd by 2t and in bracket 1 minus 2 by m next longitudinal strain okay now what is longitudinal strain notation of this longitudinal strain is equal to epsilon 2 now if strain is induced along the length that means epsilon 2 is equal to delta l by l delta l that means change in length l is equal to our original length equation of this hoop uh, longitudinal strain with respect to stress is First write down sigma l, sigma l by e minus sigma c by m e. Sigma l is equal to pd 40 e minus pd 2 t e m. Again common pd 2 t e 
first left one half and second here left one by m okay in example we use this equation also directly and also we use this equation okay uh, again longitudinal strain we can use this equation or we can use this equation okay now change in diameter del d is equal to epsilon 1 into 2 because if uh, in first uh, here i make a subject del d then change in diameter is equal to epsilon 1 into d and change in length that means this is equal to epsilon 2 into length okay uh, in this today session we discuss uh, about theory portion okay we discuss uh, thin cylinder thick cylinder then strain hoop strain longitudinal strain and also about the stresses that induce in thin cylinder next we uh, again discuss for next theory okay just now we stop here